Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's Bite Size Talk. Uh, I'd like to begin by thanking the Chan Zuckerberg Foundation Initiative for supporting all NFCO events. So, a few in, some few information about today's Bite Size Talk. So, the talk will be recorded and is being recorded at the moment, and the video will be uploaded to NFCO's um, YouTube playlist and also shared on our Slack platform. Um, after which, after the talk, which is a 15 minute talk, we'll have a session for question and answers. So feel free to post your question on the chat box or unmute and directly ask the speaker um, the question that you have. So for today's talk, we are um, honored to have Ivan Floden, who is the CEO and co-founder of Sikera Labs, who will be presenting on Nextflow Tower, which is a centralized command post for launching Nextflow pipelines. So over to you, Ivan. Hey, thank you very much. Thanks for the, thanks for the intro and thanks for having me here again. So uh, just a, a bit of a clarification. I'm, I'm really going to specify that we're going to talk about Nextflow Tower and the, the CLI in specific, uh, specifically that we've, we've released it towards the end of last year. Um, it's been like a kind of work in progress and something that we've been sort of wanting to do for a while now. Um, it really tries and answers you know, some key problems that, that people had. You know, you have, you have Tower itself which is, you know, has a graphical user interface and also has an API. And we really wanted to solve the problem for people who are used to working with Nextflow from the command line, um, but also people who wanted to have this kind of infrastructure as, as, as code like set up. So maybe as a brief introduction, um, I, can, I can start on a little bit about kind of the background to it um, and, and also the background to Sakara. So if you don't know, um, we're the main maintainers of Nextflow project and the company's about four years old now and we really kind of solve the problem primarily around the workflows becoming more complicated in terms of number of steps, but also larger amounts of data and the kind of cloud and cluster configuration side. And this kind of really ties in with, with what we've been doing with the CLI, because it really allows you to define like your whole research environment. Um, Nextflow and, you know, particularly NFCore have done a fantastic job on defining like the workflow. Um, and if you think about that workflow being typically a repository, um, you know, maybe you've got some profiles, um, you've got some sort of test ways of running those pipelines. But there's almost like a problem outside, which is like a little bit bigger than just the workflow definition, which is like, where does that workflow run? So sort of how is that infrastructure uh, created? How can I create all of that in a, in a kind of reproducible way? And how can I start to do this when a, uh, you know, using long running services without having to rely on um, you know, my laptop being the kind of the key provider of all of that? So that's what we're trying to get to go into a little bit today. And, and it really should be a little bit of a, um, a show and tell session with some, um, some examples of how you can do this from the command line. Um, so please forgive me if there is any, um, any kind of uh, typos as we go through this, but hopefully it can give you a flavor of what's possible and you can start to think how you can apply it um, in your situation. So I'm going to go into the kind of the meat of this first, and then this is really kind of the architecture of Nextflow Tower, um, not something that you specifically to know tons about, but the, the point is that that's a, it's like a full stack web application and it connects in with these computing platforms, so all of your different cloud providers, and obviously the data associated with that, um, you know, with, the, with the repositories. And then like, how do you interact with that yourself? I mean, there's typically three ways of, of doing so. The first is obviously through a web browser. So you're connecting in um, and sort of going through to a cloud or, or, or through kind of a, a user interface like model. Then there's the command line, which I'm gonna show you today. And all of that is kind of built around and sort of built on top of this, of this API layer. So Tower has published the API. Um, it says the open 3.0 standard um, from that API. So you can go into the documentation and, and do that. And we have a, a lot of people who are just building uh, purely on top of that API um, layer. But there was kind of a, a kind of need to be able to interact with Tower also from, from the command line. Here's a kind of quick example of what we're going to see later on, but the, the idea is that you can start to then launch pipelines, monitor these pipelines, kind of understand a little bit what's going on and, and, and define um, the infrastructure um, in this way. So I'm going to go through a couple of things. The first is just the very basics of the installation and, and the setup um, and then how that works, show you the repository. And then we're going to go also go through and, and, and just see how we can launch some pipelines and how we can set up sort of infrastructure as code. Now, the way that the, the CLI is written, it's it's basically in parity with the API. Um, and this means that you can do a lot of things and probably many more things than, um, than we've even kind of considered uh, for, for most applications. 
uh, when you when you see this, I kind of want you to consider like uh, other use cases. If you've got some, it'd be fantastic. We we had uh, people reach out to us the other day who were using this, you know, for uploading data sets and, and, and triggering pipelines, for example. And we wrote a blog post on that. It's sort of a fantastic piece of work. And we kind of see a whole bunch of other use cases outside this um, outside this kind of direct setup. So please shout out if you um, if you kind of want to see uh, how that works. So the first thing I'll, I'm going to point you to is, is just Tower itself and, and the way that it connects in terms of the CLI. So you can go to tower .tower, sorry, cloud.tower.nf. And when you log in here, you've got your credentials that you can log into. So typically people are using GitHub or, or Google to log in here. Um, and the first thing you have is like a kind of the, the community showcase, which is what we're going to be working in um, for some of the part today and, and really a collection of pipelines. There's some free compute so you can jump in and start launching it and, and you can interact with this with the CLI as well. The point that I want to make here is to set this up the way the CLI works, it connects to Tower and it connects via your token. So we have a, you can create your own, as many as you want, sort of access tokens here. You can see that I've created a token for the uh, NF Core demo token here. And when you create a token, um, let's just give a demo example here. You can see it just gives you that, um, that, that key there. So we can uh, basically, there's how it sort of links in there um, for doing that. I can just uh, quickly remove that one in case. Uh, for, for the to demonstration purposes. So I've got one which is LinkedIn and I'm just gonna go and export that into my environment. So how does it all that work? So the linking that works is that we have the Tower CLI, which is a standalone open source piece of software which you can download from GitHub. We have built it um, in, in all of the different environments. So if you go to tags here for each version, we, we build this for, uh, for Linux, for OS X, for, for Windows as well. Um, and then you can simply download that file and really move it to executable um, and run it uh, here. So I'm running a Mac today. So I've just downloaded the latest Mac version um, into my terminal, and then you can start to run it here. There's a little bit of background on, on, on how, you, how this works and how you can set this up, but I'll kind of leave this for later on and we can, uh, we can jump into a demo um, specifically and, and see how that works. So I'm now gonna switch over to my, uh, to my uh, terminal, to my command line, and we can uh, run a little bit from, uh, from there. Okay, so here is my command line. Um, the first thing you can see is, is that we basically, we've, instead of calling it sort of tower or NF, NF tower or anything like this, the, the command that we call it is, is with tower. Um, and you can see that all the different commands that you have here. So tower itself can really interact with all of the different aspects of the system. So we have things like actions for automations, organizing collaborators, compute environments, credentials, data sets um, as well. The other nice thing here you can do here is to write um, tower info and this is a kind of like a, like a health check. So it's gonna go connect with the, the tower instance. It's checking that we can connect to that there, the version that we're using, um, showing which user I am when I'm authenticated to do this um, and, and, and checking some details there. And this can be quite useful as well for just, um, just kind of setting it up um, and running that for, for how you go. So the way that you set this up is you would uh, typically like export um, an access token here. So in this case here, I can got my access token, which I've copied from before. I would then paste that in, export that there, um, and then you're kind of good to go and you're connected. There's a couple of other different options for uh, that you want to do when you're considering the setup. Um, the first one is really around which workspace you want to work in. I showed you the community workspace before, um, but if you have your own workspaces set up for your organization, you can simply change that from an environment variable, in this case, the tower workspace ID, but you can also change it um, from the command line when you're running this. So you can just say tower workspace um, from that. So I'm gonna say here and just export my uh, one that I'm, it's essentially the community showcase. And anything I do now, you'll be able to follow along live. So if you log into tower, you'll be able to see all of these uh, actions and essentially pipelines triggered off and, and things that were created, um, uh, follow them as, as we go through. So I'm gonna export this uh, tower workspace ID here. Just going to confirm that everything is everything is working and, and it's all fine. So my I've uploaded my credentials, connected to the right workspace, and we're ready to go. The first thing you want to consider um, in the first kind of use case for Tower is you know, the primary use case of, of what we all do is, is typically uh, run pipelines. So kind of how we how we can trigger those off. And in Tower, we have a special concept of, of what I call as pipeline is. It's essentially a almost like a reserve name um, that we've created uh, for, for the uh, system. And a pipeline is a combination of the workflow repository. So you think of this as like your Git repository where, you, where the kind of source code is host. 
hosted. Combined with a compute environment, which is really where the execution of that pipeline will take place, um, plus some parameters, essentially uh, inputs that you want to um, see default parameters, but also other parameters that you want to use. So those three things come together um, for what is called a pipeline. And if we go into now here and we see inside of the tower um, showcase, and you should see the exact same thing. If I was to say here, pipelines uh, list, you'll see that it lists all of the pipelines that we have inside of this community showcase. Uh, and this is like the end of core pipelines, but also we have some other ones we're sort of adding in here all the time. I mean, these are kind of pre-configured ones, which, which are good to go. So again, it's the kind of combination of the repo, some compute environment, um, and, and, and some parameters. If I want to launch um, one of these pipelines, I've got a couple of different options and come a couple of different ways that we can, we can do this. Well, the first thing is to say, we could say tower uh, pipelines here, and I want to say launch. And when I launch this pipeline here, I can then choose the name. Um, that I want to give it, uh, essentially launch that pipeline, or I could choose an ID. Let's just choose like a default one, and we will choose that we want to launch uh, NF Core Chipsec. So I say this here, and you can see that I have made a mistake here, pipelines launch. I think we have to give it a name here. A typo. Oh. Awesome. Yeah, type pipelines launch. And just copy paste my example. Maybe I've made a, made a typo here somewhere. Okay. Play that. Okay, it must have been a typo there somewhere. So, so this is the, the interaction that was basically taking place. And we're submitting now that pipeline. We're saying launch that pipeline with Tower. And it's important to note sort of why is this different from, from Nextflow Run? And the primary difference is that when we're launching this pipeline, we're directing Tower to launch it. There's nothing running now on my local machine where this is launched. There's no like Nextflow instance. There's no kind of head job or anything. Everything has been delegated to Tower, which in itself will submit that compute into the uh, computer environment where that's working. That's got a lot of advantages. Um, firstly, here I can shut down my laptop if I you know, need to run out to, go to end work at the end of the day. The other thing is that is, is that uh, all of the uh, essentially the record, all of this, uh, all of the logs, all of the information about the execution of the pipeline is being managed now by Tower and has a full kind of history of that. That's again a very important thing. You don't want to be sort of reliant on uh, you know reliant on um, your laptop or, or where you're launching the pipeline to manage that information. And it also means it's being collaborated. If you go into the workspace now and uh, click on this URL, you can follow along live. Um, and this allows people to kind of interactively um, work together. Maybe there's an issue that you can fix and then you can kind of fix that and launch that again. Um, and we can kind of really work in a, in a much more collaborative um, manner as well. That was a kind of basic one where we didn't actually change any of the parameters. This was a, a default launch of that. But what if you wanted to start running some of the more, you know, the pipeline where you're actually changing things up? Well, you've got a couple of different options um, for doing that we can define a little bit like the next look command line here in terms of the different stuff we can run. So imagine I wanted to say, now I want to run the viral recon pipeline from NF Core. And let's say that I want to now, instead of just run it by default, I want to use an Explo profile. And this profile may be some test data that you've got. Maybe it's a profile because of um, you know, something specific about uh, what, what you want to define there. And, and I can just use the exact same profiles here uh, to launch that as well. So that's going to trigger, trigger off there, and it's going to be launched into the community workspace um, and doing as well. Another more common use case is, is really around not so, much the, uh, not so much the changing of a profile, but changing of the input data. So what you can do here is very much like what we call the params um, file. So you can create a params file in YAML or, or JSON. Here you can see I've defined some input data. I've got some different options for, uh, for that, for those inputs. And here I've saved this in this file called params.yaml. And I could then go say, okay, let's go launch the, um, this, the tower launch of the NF core RNA seq pipeline. And now I've got the choice here of defining like some profiles, but I could also, let's say, add in now the params file itself. So let's just say a profile for test. And then I also want to put in here, the params file, exactly like you would with Nextflow. And this point here, I can just specify exactly what the location of that params file is. Obviously, this allows you to kind of um, you know, predefine a lot of stuff. Maybe you're working off like sample sheets that you've got um, predefined there, and they can kind of uh, trigger off 
that as well. Okay, let's enter the. This is my params file. I think I've probably made some typos in this. Much better copy pasting than <laughs> in the live demos than, than trying to do this, but we can, we can prove it works. Okay. So at least all that, and then we can launch that. So this is the kind of basic use case of, of launching those pipelines. You can, of course, monitor them. You can kind of um, follow them along. Um, maybe you want to do that from the GUI. Maybe you want to do it from the command line. Um, there's a whole bunch of different sort of endpoints there. I want to kind of switch gears a little bit now um, and, and think about how we can define a little bit of the infrastructure around this. So, so far, we've just kind of launched those pipelines and, and we've been able to monitor them. What about if I wanted to now do this, whether I want to set up pipelines for other people or, or, or define my research environment in a kind of more uh, generalized way? So I'm just going to switchly change over to a different workspace here. I don't want to kind of build the stuff in the community workspace. I don't want to populate it with um, different things. I'm first just going to change over to the workspace here. And then I'll look at the different pipelines that I have inside this workspace. So this is a this is a private one that you can't see, but its uh, principles are exactly the same here. So I'm just going to say tower pipelines list. It's going to show me all of the pipelines in that space, and you can see that just a whole bunch of stuff that we've um, you know been populating inside of here. You can see the repository it associates with. See a lot of NF core stuff, um, and then the kind of name of the of the pipeline. What I want to do now is imagine that I wanted to say take this, and I had like a, a test version of this or development version, and say I wanted to copy that or I wanted to give that to you, so you could kind of capture the whole thing um, in your environment. Or put another way, I wanted to really define exactly what that pipeline is made up of beyond just the workflow itself. So one way that I can do that with Tower is actually to, to take the pipelines, so take the pipelines command here, and then export the, the particular pipeline itself. And the way that this works is when I give it a name, so let's just take the first one from the top, or copy paste this time as opposed to trusting myself too much. When I export this, you'll see that it's exported entirely uh, as, this, as this JSON file here. And this has got a fantastic functionality because it means I can import and export things using this, uh, using this command and really define all of my uh, pipelines as code. So these pipelines may have different configurations, different setups for different environments. Um, and you can kind of define that now entirely uh, inside of the JSON file. But also you have a pretty nice uh, way to interact with it um, in this regard. So that means I could go create a new pipeline, maybe change one or two things out. Um, and all of that infrastructure is, the, is, is kind of uh, shown there as well. This, whole, this kind of principle of importing and exporting, defining, and, and kind of having this as a stored location works for all of the resources. So I'm showing you pipelines here, but the same thing applies to if I was going to show you, for example, the credentials. So I want a list inside Tower of all my credentials that are inside of this workspace. And you can see I've got credentials here for Google, for GitHub, for Azure, et cetera. All of that becomes available for me to, to see. Um, and then I can kind of think about how I can link that into actual computer environments of generating uh, this stuff on the fly. So if I wanted to, uh, for example, export my, my compute environment here, um, which is, as I said before, is going to be like where the compute takes place. So it's going to be uh, my, my AWS batch in one example, let's say with some credentials for that. Um, how that's set up, and you can have a look at what, what one of those looks like. So this export here, um, the credentials, you can see that this is the whole definition of that that is required. So this is running on EUS3, et cetera, all of the, the, the working directory for that um, and, and, and kind of how that sets up. So there's obviously, obviously a whole bunch of, of these things that you can run um, just to kind of give you a full demo. probably makes a little bit more sense now, all of the commands that we've seen here. Um, if we do uh, tell our command on, uh, here just by itself, you can kind of see that you can um, start to interact with creating the workspaces themselves as well, participants, um, generating, uh, you know, generating the pipelines, creating data sets. And I just will point out one more thing um, to kind of maybe to give you some, some, some sort of inspiration on, on what's possible here is that we recently released a blog post around this, which really took many of these ideas and put them all into, uh, all into kind of play. The concept here was that we wanted people to be able to essentially drop a sample sheet or a sample comes off a sequencer. And as part of that, it will trigger the execution of a pipeline all the way through. And the Tower CLI is obviously, is obviously perfect for this. And we wanted to kind of set this up on, um, on the first case on, 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 on AWS uh, itself. So the way that we did this was we defined um, some a Lambda function 
that essentially takes a sample sheet which gets generated when data enters to an S3 bucket. And then it uses the, uh, the Tower CLI uh, to generate a data set, deposit that into Tower, and then to invoke the job um, with Tower itself. So it kind of allows you to then to interact with many other different services um, for doing so and then create this whole, this is a kind of a walkthrough if you're really interested in, uh, in seeing how this can be done, we provide all the files and there's also a, uh, there's also a Git repository here if you wanna go through and, and, and follow this up um, yourself. But I'll kind of end with that. Um, we're really excited to see what people build with this. Uh, we are sort of expanding this out as well as, as we add more functionality to Tower, you know, keeping everything um, really, really kind of uh, aligned in that, in that respect. And really excited just to see what, uh, to see what people build with it, you know. Thank you, Ivan. That was a really interesting talk on Next to Tower. Um, I don't know if there's anyone who has any questions to follow up on this one. Uh, maybe I can start the questions off. So um, I haven't used Nextflow Tower before, but um, are there any more supplementary dependencies you need on your local machine when you're using Tower? So, so when you set up with Tower, the kind of, there's a couple of ways to do it. One of them is just writing with Tower from your Nextflow command. So you can say Nextflow run with Tower. This is still running it with your, your kind of, the head job is still on your, on your laptop. To connect in externally, you should log into Tower um, Cloud, and then you can essentially create your computer environment like that. So they're kind of two different ways of working, um, and they're kind of uh, to, to really get the fuel, full power of this, you should kind of log in. As I say, it's, it's running as a as a service in there, and and to provide full clarity around this, so this is Tower Cloud, um, which you can go and log in and use. And our business model is primarily around uh, deploying this in customers' own environment. So customers have their own version of Tower. Um, this is the public one I'm showing you, which you're, which you're free to use. Oh, okay. Um, we have a question from Paul. Um, and then we'll go to uh, other people who have their hands up. So some of Paul asks, I have access to a HTC supercomputer at my institution. Um, what is my use case for NF Tower? I've only used NF Tower in a limited basis and don't see the need of it. Who are the main users of NF Tower? Yeah, we can we can think of a couple of use cases. I can jump in. I can jump in there and maybe de demo a little bit. So, so one thing with, in terms of HPC, I'm showing you kind of batch and uh, AWS batch and, and different cloud environments here. If we go down to that same workspace we were working before, these are the same computer environments that I showed you, and you can connect in here with all the different platforms. So you connect in with your own, uh, in this case, you know PBS or your own Slurm cluster. Um, that you that you have here, and this kind of organizes the the infrastructure side of it, um, so you can you can connect those bits uh, into there as well for, uh, for for that part. There's, there's there's kind of three primary use cases around the use of it. So, if you are creating pipelines and you want to make them available for anyone um, who maybe doesn't even have Nextflow expertise or command line expertise, experimentalists, etc. You can create your pipeline and define it in a way which makes it super easy for them to come in. So here you can create your own customized uh, user interfaces here. So as a user, I just need to select my input data. I would come in and I say, I don't want to run my RNA seq sample sheet against that. Um, I want to go, you know, have some kind of options around this, and maybe I want to uh, save some particular files, and then I can kind of trigger the execution of that um, of that job off, and it's, it kind of simplifies the whole kind of launch process for them. As a, as a bioinformatician, you probably want to create those um, pipelines and make them available with compute to your users and to do that. Maybe you want like a long running service, you don't be relying on, on that. You have a kind of full history of your execution so you can follow those pipelines um, as, they, as they're kind of going through as well. Um, and you can also kind of automate things as well. From, a, from the kind of system admin side, you have the computer environments which can be defined and, and really a lot of work around the um, obviously the the collaborations side of it. So there's a whole bunch of use cases there. Okay. Um, so apparently everyone else was appreciating uh, your talk. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know if there's anyone else who has a question. Um, okay, seems like everyone else is satisfied. So thank you so much, Ivan, um, for the talk and I'm sure people can catch you on Slack if they have any questions. Absolutely. Thanks so much for the time, everyone. And uh, yeah, reach out if you have any other questions. Always happy to take them. Sure. Thanks for everyone for joining today's Bite Size Talk. See you next week. Thanks so much, folks.